What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to use make files for python in order to automate processes like building projects installing requirements and running scripts so let us get right into it all right so we're going to talk about make files in the python context today now, makefiles are not something that belongs to the Python ecosystem. It's something that is language independent. So makefiles can be used in a C context, in a C++ context, Java context, and so on with different libraries, different frameworks, different languages. And the basic idea is that we define certain procedures like building a project, installing requirements, running the project, setting up something or cleaning the project and stuff like that. We have these certain procedures defined with names and with sets of instructions. And we have all those defined in a make file so that we don't always have to run the same commands. We can just say make install, make run, make clean, make build and so on to execute these procedures. And today we're going to look at what this looks like in Python. And for that, we're going to use a very simple structure. We're going to have a directory, which we're going to call now my package. And inside of that directory, we're going to define a main.py file. Here we're going to now say print hello world. This is going to be our uh, functionality. And then we're going to also define a file called underscore underscore init underscore underscore py. This is basically just defining this as a package. So when we have an init file in here, this is recognized as a package. And then we also want to have outside of this directory another file, which we're going to call setup.py. And for this, we're going to need a library called or a package called setup tools. So we're going to open up the command line and we're going to type pip install setup tools. And this is going to be our build file. So once you have setup tools installed, uh, you can go into that file and we can say from setup tools import setup. Let me just uh, zoom out a little bit, set up and find packages. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say setup. This is the function and we're going to define a couple of things here. First of all, the name of the project is going to be, I don't know, my project name. Then we're going to say that the version is going to be 1.0. And then we're going to say that the packages that we want to include in this uh, and this final package is going to be the result of find packages. So we're going to call find packages. This is going to recognize the my package since it has an init file in it. And then it's going to build it when we call it properly. That is the basic structure of what we want to do here. Now, in this context, we can do a bunch of different things. So first of all, we can run the script. We can just say Python uh, main PY. Then it's going to run the functionality. So I can go here into my command line, which is just CMD. I can navigate to the directory. So to this one here. And then I can just say Python and my package main py. So this would be the running command, then I could do some other stuff like I could build the project, how do I build the project quite simple, Python setup.py and then I specify build and s dist underscore Oh, sorry, b dist underscore wheel, because we want to have a wheel file with the final build. And this creates a build and a disk directory. And here we have the wheel file of the project. So that is one thing that we can do. But then again, you know, I can also go ahead and delete all of that. So I can go ahead and say, okay, if the directories exist, I can just uh, call rd slash s slash d, uh, or actually slash q, sorry, on the build directory to remove it, I can do the same thing on the disk directory. And then those directories are gone. So that would be a cleanup. And then we can also um, install requirements. So I can specify here a file requirements.txt. I can provide setup tools here as a requirement. And you can also provide some other uh, packages, whatever. And in order to install these requirements, what we do is we say pip install dash r requirements txt. And then it installs setup tools in this case, which is already installed. Um, and those are the processes that we have here. Those are the procedures that we would like to have professionally and simply in a make file. 
Now, why do we want to have that? Because it's quite tedious to always do the same stuff. So let's say I do some changes, I make some changes, I go into the main file and I don't want to print hello world now, I want to print hello world. Now I changed something, I want to rebuild the whole thing. What do I have to do? First of all, maybe I want to run it. That's not too complicated. I run it. I see it works. Okay, now I want to build again. So I have to say uh, Python setup and so on. I have to remember the commands and maybe you even have some more complicated procedures and also the cleanup. You have to clean up uh, multiple directories. You have to also remove this directory here, which is also quite tedious to do it every time yourself. So you can just have all of this under the name of one procedure. And this is done using make files. That is the purpose of a make file. And in order to create a make file, we just create here a new file. And the important thing is the make file has to be called make file with a capital M. So we want to call it make file like this. And in this case, in PyCharm, I already have um, a plugin that recognizes make files. The important thing about make files, as far as I understand, is that we have to use tabs instead of spaces. So when you have something like some command colon, and you want to define what the command is, you have to tap into that command, you are not allowed to use spaces. So you're not allowed to use one, two, three, four, it has to be a tap. This is important for make files. Now, before we define the actual make file, one thing that's important is uh, that you have to be able to run make files. Now, if you have the Windows subsystem for Linux, that's quite simple, because on a Windows subsystem for Linux, we can just use make and it is going to look for make files. So if I say make, uh, it will say no make file found because there is no make file on my desktop. If there is a make file, it's going to recognize that and execute it. Um, on Windows, that's not the case by default. Now, in my case, it is the case because I already have make installed. But by default, you don't have make on Windows. What you need to do in order to get make on Windows is you either have to go and download the installer, you will find hopefully a link in the description down below. Uh, or the simple way is to install a uh, I'm not sure what it's pronounced, Chocolatty or something like that. It's written like that, Choco. I think that's, that's the name of the tool. And once you have this command line tool installed, you can just hopefully find a link in the description down below on how to get this. Once you have Choco installed, you can just say Choco install and then make. And then you're going to be able to use the make command. So this is what you want to have in order to be able to execute these um, commands here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say that we have a procedure run and the run procedure is going to just say Python my package <coughs> main py. Then I want to have one install. This is just going to say pip install dash r requirements txt. Then I want to have one built. Build is going to be Python setup py build b dist underscore wheel. And then I want to have one clean, for example, where I want to say RD, this is on Windows, by the way, RD slash S slash Q, the build. That's basically um, not exactly the same, I think, but roughly the same as um, RM, RF on, so RM dash RF on Linux. But you want to do this here for build, you want to do this here for distant, we want to do this, uh, what was the name, I think... Now, I don't know what the name of the third directory was, maybe we have to uh, build it first. So let's go ahead, Python setup py build b dist underscore wheel. Then it should create the directories again. It's my project name dot egg info. So rd slash f uh, slash s slash q my project name dot egg info. And the important thing here on Windows is if you don't want this to crash, you need to also say if exists. Um, and then in quotation marks dot slash built, if that directory exists, only then do all of this. Because the important thing is, if it tries to delete something that does not exist, it's going to crash and it's not going to do anything. And this also means that if you have, for example, the disk directory, but the build is already deleted, it's not going to execute the second command, because you don't have, um, uh, by the way, it's not exists, it's exist, without the s. Um, but you need to make sure that what you're trying to do here actually works because otherwise it's not going to execute the other command. So for example, if I, if build does not exist and I'm not checking here, then it's also not going to delete this because it's going to crash here. That's what I'm trying to say. 
So this is now the make file. We can go into our command line on Windows here, the CMD command line, and I can say now make install. And you can see it runs pip install dash r requirements. And then I can do make run. And then it says hello worlds. Um, I can also say make build. Build is up to date, uh, which basically means that nothing changes if I run build because we already have all of this here. Um, and because of that, I can do make clean. And make clean is going to delete these directories. Now you can see they're gone. Um, and then I can say make build. And usually, oftentimes, you have something like make all, um, if necessary. In this case, probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but you can chain commands. So if you have uh, multiple things that have to be done in a row, you can just say make all, and it's going to do all of them in a row, all these procedures in a row. Um, but yeah, this is how you can automate this. And what you can also do here, which I didn't do, is you can provide also certain files that need to exist. So I can say build setup.py and install requirements.txt, which basically means that this command is not going to be executed if the file does not exist, right? So that's important as well sometimes. Now, one thing that you might be wondering is, um, what do I do if I have different commands on Linux and on Windows? So if I use this make file on Windows, it might work, but what if I wanna use it on Linux, on my Linux subsystem, for example? If I go to, um, if I go to the directory here, I think some of it will work, but actually not, because uh, Python, Python is not the command that we have to use on Linux here, it's Python 3, and it's also not pip, it's pip 3, and it's also not rd slash s slash q, it's rm dash rf. So how do I change the commands based on the operating system? Quite simple, we can go up here and we can say if equal, so if eq, and then dollar and os, in parentheses, comma, Windows, underscore NT, that basically means if the operating system is Windows, then do all of this, define all of this. Otherwise, we can then copy all of this here. And basically, this is now Linux um, and Mac and other operating systems. We can define an end if down here. And now we can change the command. So Python 3, pip 3, Python 3, and here we can just do rm-rf. So actually, can I, there you go. No, actually, what do I want to do? I want to do, uh, let me just do it like that. rm-rf, rm-rf, like this. So those would now be the Linux commands. And if I now go into Linux and I say make run, you can see it works. I can also say make install. And you can see this works. I can do make clean works as well and make build. And you can see this works as well. And if I now try to do make build again, you will see that it says it's up to date. Nothing changes if I run this again. So this is how you professionally use make files in the context of Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.